Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. We have a lot of work to do in the weather department. It's like a bad dream. We are just days away from the 1st of May, and our meteorologists are calling for snow this weekend. We'll tell you about the weekend plans in a moment. Plus, a four-year-old runs and hides during a morning shooting in Taylor. New at noon, we're talking to that child's mother. But we do begin this noon with breaking news out of Detroit. That is where officers are in the middle of a standoff. Sky 4 video shows you the area of Cardoni Street. This is 8 Mile and Chrysler. We know that officers have been out for a couple of hours now, and police have a few of the streets blocked off as they are searching. We will let you know when the situation is resolved and any new updates on ClickOnDetroit.com and right here on Local 4. Also right now, Taylor police are searching for a suspect after a man was shot several times. This happened about 9 o'clock this morning on McGuire Street near the southbound area of I-94, just south of I-94. Sean Lay has been talking with investigators and has the very latest from the scene. You got to be freaked out. I am. My heart's pumping like I... I don't think I have a pulse in my heart right now. <laughs> Jessica Belden is a young mom of three. She's in disbelief over what she saw outside of her window on quiet McGuire Street in Taylor this morning. She heard five shots. She saw a man bleeding in the street, then saw her neighbor speed away in his red SUV. I heard the gunshots and I looked out my window and I see the guy that got shot was just sitting kind of like, you know, to the edge a little bit. I'm like, uh, and I was like, Dad? And he's like, stay in the house, stay in the house. I'm like, I heard you. And that was our Sean Lay reporting. We have other breaking news to get to out of our newsroom, and this has to do with Russian gun rights activist Maria Butina. She was sentenced to 18 months in prison after pleading guilty to trying to infiltrate GOP groups before and after the Russian election. She'll get nine months off for time already served. And more breaking news into our newsroom. Russia, uh, that's the gun rights activist that we just told you about. In fact, I guess the other breaking news we could call it is the fact that we're going to have snow at the end of April. Andrew, it's going to be May <laughs> on Wednesday. We need to get this winter weather out of here. It's spring already. Oh, we certainly do. We have to talk with Mother Nature, right? She has other plans for us for this weekend. We're looking at some rain showers that are still around now. Not very many, not as widespread, not as heavy as earlier this morning. That's some good news. Nonetheless, still a couple of drops around Port Huron and just south of the city over Lake Erie. That continues to pull away. So the good news is we are dry from here on out for the rest of the day for all your afternoon plans. 53 right now, but once those clouds clouds break, we'll see our temperatures pop up into the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. Like it is in Lansing right now at 58, it's still chillier where it's cloudier, still 46 over in Sandusky. So a little milder today, but it also becomes windy. Winds up to 16, 24 miles per hour, so hold on to your hats. As this pulls away, we're looking at drier conditions for the afternoon. There might be a shower or two for the afternoon commute, but not as widespread or as persistent as this morning. But wouldn't you know it, come Saturday, we've got more clouds on the way and the possibility of rain and snow that comes in from the west to the tune of, in terms of snow, one to three inches across southern Michigan. What does it mean for us? I'll break down these snow totals neighborhood by neighborhood coming up. We don't want to see three inches around here this weekend, Andrew. Thank you. Two lawsuits have been filed against the Detroit police officers involved in that Snapchat video case. The lawsuits are against former officer Gary Steele. One of the lawsuits is on behalf of Ariel Moore, who was the woman at the center of that video taken by officers Gary Steele. The other lawsuit is on behalf of Elaine Muriel, who says that Steele broke her arm during an arrest. New at noon, a woman takes the law into her own hands and shoots a suspected car thief. Let's get to Nick Monticelli from Detroit's West Side with more. Good afternoon. All this happened here on Coil. The homeowner lives right here. The target vehicle that would have been stolen was right here. In fact, you can still see some of the glass left over from the shooting. It all happened at about 2.30 in the morning. In fact, we've got the video to show you. The homeowner is 61 years old. So she heard commotion outside, thought it was strange, walked outside and saw the man inside of her car, the suburban you see right here, trying to steal it. She confronted him and it turned into a physical fight, a struggle. And during that struggle, at some point, she pulled out a gun and shot him. 
Now that uh, suspect is 49 years old. He is listed in temporary serious condition. He is expected to be okay. Now here's where things are gonna get kind of tricky. There's uh, many factors in here. Number one, the 61 year old is not a CPL holder. So there's an issue with having the gun. It wasn't licensed, but Michigan is an open carry state. There's the issue with defending your property. Yes, you can defend your property, but up to your property line. You can't defend against a vehicle being stolen that's not actually on your property, and this is the city street. And also, because of where it happened, that could be the problem. So, we're gonna examine a lot of that. In fact, we are talking to the experts to get a better idea of what she's looking at, what charges she could be facing because of this, and also the charges that the suspect could be facing, but most importantly, some advice for you if this happens to you. When you can use some kind of deadly force, when you're advised not to, and some guidelines surrounding all of that. We'll have all those answers coming up on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. On Detroit's west side, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Nick, thank you. A Dearborn Heights City Councilman was in court today facing a home invasion charge. Back in December, prosecutors say that Councilman Raymond Muscat and his neighbor got into a fight over newspapers. Police say that Muscat caught his neighbor dumping old newspapers in his yard, and he then stormed into the neighbor's home, and a fight broke out. Both men were arrested. Today, Muscat was released on a $1,000 bond. His neighbor will be arraigned at a later date. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is headed back home after directing some harsh criticism at Washington here in the U.S. during his first summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Let's get to Keir Simmons with the very latest. Kim Jong-un has left Vladivostok amid more pomp and ceremony, but the warm atmosphere is somewhat colder after those reports that North Korea demanded $2 million for the hospital care for Otto Wombia before they were prepared to release him. Of course, the University of Virginia student was ultimately released in a coma and died sometime afterwards. There was no money paid. There was a fake news report that money was paid. I haven't paid money for any hostage. It's going to make it harder for trust to be built, exactly the kind of trust that President Putin said would be needed in order for there to be a deal between President Trump and Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un at the same time uh, giving an interview to his own state media saying that it would depend on the U.S. whether that deal could be done and the United States had until the end of the year to do a deal. So ultimately after this summit that was presented as showing some promise turns out to perhaps be showing less promise. Keir Simmons, NBC News, Vladivostok, Russia. Later this afternoon, the Detroit Lions are going to be introducing the team's first round draft pick right here coming to Detroit with the eighth overall pick. The Lions went with TJ Hawkinson. He was described as the best tight end in the draft at six foot five, weighing 250 pounds. Experts say that he's being compared to some of the best tight ends in the NFL, like Rob Gronkowski, just to name one. Hawkinson says that he's all in on the Detroit Lions and he'll be introduced at a four o'clock press conference. And so we'll have all of the highlights tonight at five. Now at noon, Amazon is looking to take fast shipping even faster. Coming up, what the online retail giant has up its sleeve that could put another nail in the brick and mortar store coffin. But first, a grandma, a baby, and a woman either uh, enter a liquor store. It's not a bad joke either. New at noon, how this unlikely trio got away with $500 worth of booze. NBC. Caught on camera, a group of bold robbers get away with $500 worth of expensive cognac. Take a look. They appear to be a man and a woman with a baby and a grandma. They shop around until other customers leave, and then the woman hands the baby to the grandma. The man then calls the clerk to the back of the store to distract the clerk where he was or had some questions about wine on the lower shelf. As he distracts the clerk, though, the woman goes behind the front counter, grabs two very very expensive bottles of liquor valued at 250 bucks a piece puts them right in her skirt. The grandma signals to the man that the mission is complete. The group was quick and only staying in that store for about six minutes, but got away with $500 worth of liquor. 
Jeopardy champion James Holzhauer continues to break records by winning his 16th straight show. His total is now $1.2 million. He is the only, I should say, the second person in the game's 35-year history to hit the $1 million mark in the regular season. See if he can win again tonight at 7.30 right here on Local 4. In case you didn't know, today is National Pretzel Day, and pretzel chains across Metro Detroit are celebrating with some deep discounts, starting with Auntie Anne's. It is offering free original and cinnamon sugar pretzels with any purchase of a pretzel item. Wetzel's Pretzels is also giving away one free original pretzel, and Ben's Soft Pretzels will give away free jumbo soft pretzels to customers who make at least a $1 donation to the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. Plan on heading to maybe Somerset Mall over the weekend, or if you're just passing along I-75 through Troy, there's a major traffic alert that you need to know about. As if the traffic construction there isn't bad enough, we'll tell you what you need to know after the break. And tomorrow is National Drug Take Back Day, but you don't have to wait to get clean out of the medicine cabinet. Coming up, easy tips to dump those old prescriptions safely. Andrew? And Rhonda, the rain that we had this morning is leaving the area. Drier conditions on the way with some sunshine, but you can see showers out in the plains. What does that mean for us? And weekend snow, we'll talk about that as well, and possible snow totals coming up. Call Sam. Now at noon, we want to tell you about some traffic trouble in Oakland County for the weekend as part of that massive I-75 reconstruction project. Starting tonight at 10 p.m., MDOT crews are going to be demolishing the bridges over northbound I-75 over Big Beaver Road. That means that both directions of Big Beaver Road are going to be shut down as a result, as well as the exit from I-75 south to Big Beaver. Fortunately, no lanes of the freeway itself will be impacted. Crews hope to be done with that project by Monday morning at 5 a.m. Amazon is determined to make one day shipping the norm for Prime members. The online retailer giant is investing $800 million towards making free one day shipping the Prime standard. Amazon's chief financial officer says that he expects the company to make, quote, steady progress on this this year. The company already offers one day shipping for some products and customers. It also provides two hour deliveries on certain items via its Prime Now service. You just got to have it right away. <laughs> Can't go to the store. You just want to order it online and get it to your door. Rain, snow, <laughs> or wind. <laughs> no. uh, but this is one of those days or weekends where you might want to do some online ordering and not go out. <sighs> That's right, because we have some <laughs> inclement weather on the way, and this is Detroit and Southeast Michigan. So yes, even though it's late April, May knocking on the door, we are talking about the possibility of snow. Let's talk about some good news first, though. The rain that we had earlier, it's now leaving. It's now uh, diminishing as well, mainly moving well to the east for our friends and neighbors over in Pittsburgh, parts of New York, parts of southern Ontario as well. You can see what's left over here, not very much. A couple of sprinkles around Port Huron, a couple of blips of green showing up here right around the Southfield area, right around Ferndale. So you can see that here uh, just the west of Romulus and around Belleville, but that is it drier from here on out throughout the rest of the day. Now there may be a scattered shower or two that will flare up around 4 to 6 p.m. So we're not exactly out of the woods just yet. There's still enough energy here where we might see a scattered shower toward the end of the afternoon between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. for the ride home. Out farther to our west, you have a storm climbing out of the Rockies. That's our next rainmaker and yes, our next snowmaker because it's giving us some colder air to run along with it. First, we're looking at dry conditions out there right now, 53 degrees as we look at downtown Detroit. Wind is up there at around 16 miles per hour. So here's my slippery timeline for you. From now all the way until about four or five in the afternoon on Saturday, just one word, dry. So we remain dry for the most part, minus those couple of showers for this afternoon, but overnight tonight and for the first half of Saturday at least, it'll be fine. Rain showers sneak in here after 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. And then it gets colder from Saturday into Sunday. That's when we'll see that changeover from rain into snow. Right now we're looking at temperatures in the 40s and low 50s. 51 for our friends in Sterling Heights, 52 out to Saline, 54 in Monroe. With enough sunshine later today, we may spike to around 60 degrees or a bit more. Wind right now pretty brisk at around 16, 21, 17 miles per hour, so hold on to your hats. 
gusty as well with wind gusts between 20 and 25 miles per hour that may get a little higher. There are those couple of showers that might flare up in the afternoon, but only quickly because they leave certainly by nightfall. We're looking at increasing clouds for tomorrow. Notice by tomorrow afternoon, we're still fine. Mostly cloudy skies, but dry. But here's that next storm that rolls in out of the Rockies and the Plains. You see the blue along with it. That's the indication that enough cold air wraps around where there's a possibility of snow. And yes, measurable snow to the tune of maybe a half inch to an inch right here in the city of Detroit, a little bit farther west, a little bit farther north. You're talking about an inch or more. So places like Livingston County, areas north of Hall Road may see one inch or two inches or slightly more depending on where you are. So 62 degrees overnight, Rhonda, excuse me, 62 degrees for this afternoon. Overnight we dip into the 30s, but rain and snow don't enter the picture until late Saturday into early Sunday and still wet, but at least way above freezing next week. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get back to the 70s. I would prefer that. <laughs> Tomorrow is National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, and you are encouraged to take unused or expired medications to designated sites in your community. But there are ways to get rid of medicine year round and do it safely. Here's how with Erica Edwards. One way to combat the opioid epidemic begins in the medicine cabinet. According to a national survey on drug use and health, over 11 million people misused prescription pain relievers in 2017. Many got them from a friend or relative. If you have it laying around, that's easy access to someone that can see what they have. Experts say the best thing to do is get rid of the medication once you no longer need it, but safely. Many pharmacy chains, such as Walgreens and CVS, now have kiosks inside some of their stores where people can discard most of their medicine year round. There's people that will come in with bags of medication. They're not going to bring one at a time. If you don't live near a collection site, there are ways you can throw out medicine at home. The FDA recommends mixing medication with something unsavory, such as dirt or kitty litter, and putting it in a sealed bag and then throw it out with your trash. If you throw out the prescription bottle, make sure all personal information has been removed. And only flush medication if the label or accompanying information specifically instructs you to do so. It's important spring cleaning that can have lasting impacts on health. Erica Edwards, Local 4. And if you do not live near a pharmacy that has a disposal bin, experts say that you should call your local health department and they may be able to provide some suggestions. Thought to have been lost forever, a 400-year-old Bible is finally back in a U.S. museum. New at noon, how the holy book ended up all the way over in the Netherlands. Players now. Welcome back, everybody. We have a great story. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a 400-year-old Bible that was stolen that is now finally back to the place that it was taken from. That's right, Rhonda. The Geneva Bible was returned to the Carnegie Library in Pittsburgh. Investigators believe it was stolen in the 19, 1990s from the library's Oliver Room, uh, which is home to rare books and items. The book was eventually sold to the museum in the Netherlands in 2015. That museum's director worked with Dutch police to return the Bible to the United States. And oh. several weeks ago, our Brandon Rue underwent back surgery, and we're excited to share that he's fully healed and headed back to work. So you'll see him back here on Local 4 News at noon and also on the morning show starting on Monday. Way to go. Yeah, we're excited to have him back. And we'll see you soon. Have a great weekend, everybody.